Still looking for their first playoff victory in the Vladdy and Boa era. Is this finally the year the Blue Jays can get over the hump? Hey, everyone. Welcome into the season preview edition of Long Ball. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Blue Jays writer Rob Longley. And Rob, the expectations for this team have dipped a little bit coming off another disappointing playoff exit. But this is still a very talented team that if it all clicks, could make some noise. Let's start with a sore spot for this team last year, and that, of course, was the offense. We know how bad they were with runners in scoring position and their lack of power. They didn't really address the latter much in the offseason. Justin Turner and Isaiah Kiner-Falefa, the marquee additions to this lineup, and we'll see what happens, of course, with Joey Votto. But when you look at that side of the ball, is it an improvement on last year's club? Yeah, Rob, uh, first with those expectations, externally, they certainly are uh, muted compared to last year. But I think internally, the guys on this team seem to think that they're capable of, of, of reviving that offense and, and of being a contender again in the American League. Um, but yeah, that offense, I mean, you know, we've talked about it, Rob. They've, they've made some improvements, um, maybe, with, with Isaiah Kiner, Falefa, and, and Justin Turner. I think Turner's been a positive influence in, in that clubhouse and can certainly hit a little bit. But really, if this offense is going to come back to anywhere near what it has been, uh, for for much of the past three years, it's going to have to come through internal improvement, and and by that it's pretty simple. It's going to have to come from the leadoff man, George Springer. It's going to have to come from the guy who's likely hitting in the third in the three hole, uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. It's going to have to come from Alejandro Kirk, and it's going to have to come from Dalton Varsho, and then have the others carry the, carry the weight as well. Can they do it? I mean, internally, the Blue Jays believe that the metrics show that. There was a lot of bad luck last year, and I suppose there is some truth to that. But, I mean, until you do it in, in actual games and until you perform and score, and score, score runs, um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a work in progress. They've, they've addressed it in, in other ways. Obviously, we've talked about this, too, with uh, Donnie Baseball, Don Mattingly being the offensive coordinator, a new position. And players I talked to throughout the spring have talked about how they've adjusted their approach. And I think the idea is going to be, you know, make sure we keep the line moving. Uh, make sure we wait for our pitch. Be more patient at the plate. Don't be trying to force things, trying to force runs. Let, let, let it come to you a little bit. And, and generally when that happens, if you're waiting for your pitch, not only do you have more success, but often power comes back in, into play. And I think those are sort of the, that's sort of the premise this offense is taking into the season. In practice, we're about to find out if it's going to work. So you mentioned a bunch of the guys that this team is going to be leaning on for bounce back seasons, whether it's maybe some of the new guys or, as we mentioned, some of the uh, guys that are looking to turn things around. Is there one or two players that you're going to be really intrigued by heading into the season? As always, Vlad Guerrero Jr. I mean, I've been intrigued with him since he was since he first made his debut in the major leagues. And and watching that incredible 2021 season was 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 really something to behold. And then since then, it's been the fascination of when is it going to come back? I mean, is he just the kind of guy who's going to be uh, put on a show in all-star games and home run derbies? Or is he going to be the kind of guy who can can lead and, and, and uh, be a dynamic force in an offense? Um, you know, his story is an interesting one this spring. He's, he's definitely in as good a shape as he's ever been. Many around the team have said he's in, in as good a shape as he was in 2021. And that was his 48 home run season, his breakthrough campaign. So... If being in that kind of condition helps, um, it, it certainly can't hurt. But if you look at his at-bats, I mean, he's been been uh, hitting the ball hard, which is kind of his calling card, but he's been doing it regularly throughout the spring training. And I think he's, he's feeling a certain confidence in, in, in both his mental approach and his physical approach, and, and he's going to be fascinating to watch in a number of ways. The other guy, Rob, is, uh, and I wrote about it yesterday, was George Springer. Um, you know, he... he uh, uh, he adapted his approach this year. He came to, he lives down here in Florida, but he started working out a little earlier and, you know, he, he adjusted his approach as well. And he's had a like incredible spring training at the plate. He's, he's hitting the ball hard. He's hitting it to off um, all the fields. And Justin Turner said, like, he's, he's an on-base machine right now. And, you know, when you have a pretty good offense and you have a guy like that, who when he's on can be one of the best leadoff hitters in baseball, he certainly wasn't for too much of last season. But if he can be that prototypical top leadoff guy, I think he's going to be fascinating to watch. And the way manager John Schneider has seems to be structuring the order now is he's going to have Vlad Guerrero Jr. hitting in the two hole, and he's going to have Bo Bichette hitting third with Justin Turner, the cleanup guy. And the reason he's doing that is he says he likes to have, Schneider said he likes to have um, Vlad in between those two, in between uh, 
Bichette and, and Springer. He, he feels that's a good spot for him in the order. So the top four, anyways, it, it can be pretty dynamic. And, and, and then if the other guys can contribute, the offense uh, could, could be back to close to what it was a couple of years ago. Moving to the pitching side, the depth being tested right now in both the rotation and the pen with some injuries. This was one of the best pitching staffs in all of baseball a year ago, Rob. Can they replicate it in 2024? You know, health is going to have to be a factor, Rob. And I guess the good the good news is that the the injury woes that they have had seem to be short term. Obviously, um, Kevin Gosman's performance uh, on uh, Monday here in in Florida, down in Bradenton, was was quite sensational. Really, I was down there watching it. He he struck out seven in three plus innings of, of work uh, in his first appearance. Um, he's not going to be able to go complete games just yet, but the way that he pitched uh, in that outing suggests that he's going to be able to start the season at the back end of the, ro- of the rotation. And obviously they're without Alec Manoa for, for, and uh, you know, an unknown amount of time right now, but Bowden Francis kind of earned his spot in the rotation and, and many around the team seem to think that he will be a, a viable guy in that rotation. And then at the top, you got Jose Barrios and Chris Bassett who had really, really good springs. Uh, you say Kikuchi less so, but he was working on a lot of things. So, yeah, I mean, if that if that rotation can be anywhere near what it was um, last season, then that's going to be that's going to be the key to this team having some success. Over in the bullpen, there's there's some injury concerns as well. It, it, it certainly appears uh, at this point, anyway, that that both closer uh, Jordan Romano and uh, another key arm in that bullpen, um, Eric Swanson. Yes, Eric Swanson will both start the season on the injury list. Uh, the Jays don't seem to be too concerned about it because in, in both cases, it seems to be temporary. So who's going to fill the void in at that point? I imagine, you know, Mitch White might get a, ro- a roster spot. Zach Pop might get a roster spot. But more significantly, who's going to, you know, pitch those crucial uh, late innings? And I think they'd probably look to a guy like Jimmy Garcia. And they'd look to a guy like uh, Chad Green, who's, you know, I could be, I think he could be the sneaky, really real star of the, of, of the Blue Jays bullpen this season. So, you know, a couple of hiccups health wise during spring training, but still, you know, the basis of one of the best pit, uh, pitching staffs in, in, in all of the American league. Okay. Prediction time. Vegas has hmm. the blue Jays over under wins total at 86 and a half. Which side are you taking? I would lean over Rob um, only because I think that this team should be at least as good as they were last year. And that was an 89 win team. Uh, you know, a lot of people expect a regression. I'm not so sure that I'm among among that group. I, I, I'm not also among the group that thinks that they're going to necessarily contend to to win the division. But the way baseball's structured now with the, the, with parity, I mean, you know, there's as Chris Bassett put it the other day, it seems like there's 15 teams that are contenders and 15 teams that have no chance. And the Blue Jays are very much in the 15 teams that are contenders. So they're going to be somewhere between 87 and 93 or 94 wins. So. Um, to me, the, to me, the over looks like a like a a smart play because I believe that uh, you know there are people around baseball that may be sleeping on this team a little bit right now. All right, well, they'll look to get win number one on Thursday afternoon as it all gets started at Tropicana Field. Blue Jays taking on the Rays. You can find all of Rob's Blue Jays coverage over at the Toronto Sun.